Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to briefly give the definition of a commutative unital ring. My, my, the unital just means with one. So you've probably seen this as commutative ring with one or commutative unitary ring or something like that. Uh, yes, sorry. Okay, so so this is a ring. It there's there's a lot of structure to this ring. So what do I mean by a lot of structure? Well, there's a set and there's a bunch of operations and constants and stuff on the set. Actually, I can put one more. They're not really silly, but I can put like a minus unary minus. Okay, and these op this set along with these operations together describes the ring structure. So the set is R. Addition, this is called addition, and we use the same jargon as we use for usual additions. We talk of sums and summations and things like that. Addition is a binary operation. So it's it takes two real two not real sorry two ring inputs and outputs one ring element. Okay. This satisfies some condition, so it's commutative. I won't write full words, commutative, associative. It has an additive identity, which is called zero. So zero is an element of the ring, which is an identity both ways, and and it has additive inverses. And the additive inverse you can denote by this unary minus. So the unary minus is actually just a function from R to R. Let me just send any element to its negative. So this is saying that the unary minus is a is the additive inverse operation for plus. And also closure. Well, closure is sort of uh, captured in the notation itself, uh -huh. the way I've written, because it's a binary operation for R from R plus R to R means it's closed. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what a function, like it's a function from R plus R to R means it's closed. So I'm not listing closure separately. Okay. Uh, but yeah, when you go to subrings, you have to check closure separately because a priori you don't know whether when the inputs are in the subring, the output is in. Yeah. So, so the way, the, what you call closure, some people just say check whether the operation is well defined, whether it makes sense as an operation. Okay. Okay. So now we have multiplication. Now this is this we use the jargon associated with products. So we say product of two elements. We say um, the we say we are multiplying the two elements, and and in many cases we drop the dot. So the dot is used like a dot b, right? Addition you say a plus b. Here you say a dot b, but many people just drop the dot and just write a b. A b just means a times c. So what condition does the multiplication satisfy? The same set of unitary. Well, not quite all of them. So it's commutative. Because we are using the commutative unit, mm -hmm. it's uh, associative. associative, and it has a multiplicative identity one. That's where the unit will comes in. Oh, okay. It doesn't have a multiplicative inverse. Yes. In fact, it unless your ring is the zero ring, you cannot have globally multiplicative inverses because the element zero for addition cannot can never be multiplicatively inverted. Mm -hmm. And so the, the reason is very similar to the reason why it's true in the real numbers or things, but it's it's true very generally, right? Uh, so so zero cannot be inverted. So you cannot have multiplicative inverses unless your ring is just the trivial zero ring or something. Okay. Uh, for non-trivial rings, one is not equal to zero. So if one were actually equal to zero, then your ring would actually be a one-point ring, the, just the single element ring, which is not very interesting for non-trivial rings, non-zero rings. We'll talk about this in a while. Okay, and now you have a compatibility, some compatibility condition, and the main compatibility, con well, the only compatibility condition here is distributivity, which is a compatibility condition between addition and multiplication. It says a dot b plus c is a dot b plus a dot c. And a plus b dot c is a dot c plus b dot c, and these hold for all a, b, c, and r. This is for for all. You seen this? Saw this in in this class or earlier? 
Uh, you should have seen it earlier, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, but, and these could be equal. So you're allowed to put equal values. Okay, so far so good. Now, excuse me, uh, where does the unital come from? Like the unital just means there's a multiplicative identity. Okay. This means commutative ring with one. Okay. Some people just say commutative ring with one. So, so many people use the word ring for just saying that this operation is associative. So they ignore the commutative and this one thing. Mm -hmm. And they just say associative. And when people want to talk about commutative, they use the word commutative ring. So that includes commutative. Mm -hmm. And when they also want to say it's a one, then it's the multiplicative identity one. In many people follow the convention that when they say ring, they mean both these conditions. So it depends. There's something called commutative algebra where you assume the word ring to have these conditions. And there's something called non-commutative algebra where you assume, where you don't assume these conditions for, for when you use the word ring. Now I want to say, okay, now why is this important? Well, first of all, what this does is this allows you to to sort of economize on proofs. What that means is that you can prove something in for all rings. You can give a general proof that applies for all rings and then that proof will apply to every specific ring you come across. Right? So it will apply to the real, the complex numbers, the integers, the rational numbers, all the rings you come across, it will apply to. So proving things for rings in general is both easier and harder. Well, why is it harder? It's harder because you, because a general ring, you don't actually know what the actual operations are. The only things you're allowed to use are these axioms, right? But you don't actually know what the operations are. So you are restricted in what you can use. But that's an advantage also because you don't get sort of bogged down by a lot of additional structure. So you don't try to use methods of calculus to prove something because there's no calculus here, right? You cannot do differentiation, integration, anything with rings. Mm -hmm. So in some sense, you have restricted methods and that, that allows you to try out sim uh, simple proofs or simple things.